Martin is a horror film by horror mastermind George A. Romero, the man behind the Dead franchise and the Crazies. Martin believes himself to be a vampire. His cousin, a stern Catholic, agrees to let him live with him in an attempt to cease his cravings for blood. The film stars Romero regular John Amplis. Howdy folks, welcome back to Garage Vampire Thon, where every day for the month of October we revisit a vampire movie. Today we're talking about the George A. Romero classic, or cult classic I should say, Martin. If I sound a little congested in this video, it's because I am, I apologize for it. Hopefully you enjoy my voice. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I just did that. Anyway, George Romero. Fun fact about George Romero pertaining to this channel, this is the third movie marathon I do in the month of October, and George Romero's been featured in all three marathons. In the Zombiethon, we talked about all of his dead movies, and then in the Stephen Kingathon, we talked about Creepshow. And now we're talking about Martin, which is a vampire movie for this Vampirethon. How appropriate. What I like the most about George A. Romero is that he really elevated the genre of horror. Horror is always seen as this very lowbrow, kind of not artistic genre. And George A. Romero played a really big part in elevating the horror genre into something that is now respected. So I have a lot of admiration for George Romero. He did so by mixing social commentary with horror elements. You look at a movie like Dawn of the Dead, that was a movie about American consumerism, but it was a zombie movie. Land of the Dead is a movie about the social class divide in America, also disguised as a zombie movie. Creepshow, not so much social commentary, but a fun time nonetheless. This movie has quite a bit of social commentary as well. Movie has a very striking opening. One that would make the average audience member uncomfortable. Martin is on a train, meets with this woman, who is going to be his first victim. As an audience member, you know he's going to bite into her no throat. But what you don't expect as much is that he strips this woman of her clothing and begins to kind of rape her. <laughs> is kind of uncomfortable to watch but there's a there's definitely a reason for that to happen in this movie it's not exploitative so like i said george a romero loves mixing social commentary with his films this is a social commentary on drug addiction post vietnam just the time period in which this came out this was after the vietnam war a lot of people are addicted to drugs you look at the setting of this movie when Martin arrives in the town. It's this rundown steel mill that kind of doesn't have a use anymore. Those are usually the kinds of places that you would find drug addicts. A lot of the imagery he uses, uh, Martin's weapon of choice is razor blades and syringes. And just the characterization of Martin himself. He's a loner. He has no love in his life. And he uses the blood of people in an attempt to cope with his loneliness. Which is why in that opening sequence, he rapes the woman. He's more desperate for human connection than he is for blood. And throughout the film, he'll say that. He'll say, I really want to be with a person, and I think once I am with a person, I will get relieved of these cravings. And this comes true when he meets a woman who is actually interested in him, and he loses his virginity to her. You want me here for sex, don't you? 
I never really did it before. I was always too shy. But I decided I'd really like to do it with you. That's right, my guy Martin got milfed in this fucking movie. But yeah, and just the way people treat him too. His strict cousin who's trying to exercise him. There's a part in this movie where they have a family intervention that's kind of along the same lines as you would expect from a drug intervention, except for this time it's pertaining to Martin's behavior. And shock jocks are constantly ridiculing him. There's this shock jock who's constantly calling him and calling him the Count, trying to get him to talk about his addiction to drinking blood. So you don't burn up to a crisp in the so sunlight. You don't burn up to a Nothing like that. Well, the sun bothers my eyes sometimes, well, and especially when it's about time, especially when I get shaky. Yeah, well, listen, Count, my sponsor's get getting shaky, so I gotta yeah, take well, a break. Count, Hang on a minute. Nighttimers have been talking to the Count. Yes, a real, live, honest-to-goodness vampire. And if you have any questions you'd like to pass on to the Count, how about giving me a call here at 555-1650? Be back in a moment. It kind of reminded me of something like Opie and Anthony. <laughs> Obi and Anthony would have a guess that's kind of like Martin. But all those things kind of add to the tragedy of Martin's situation. Again, at times you feel like you're not watching a horror movie about a vampire. You feel like you're watching a movie about a drug addict. And it just so happens he he's a vampire. It's really an interesting concept. And there were some elements of that. One that comes to mind is in the Christopher Lee Dracula movie we talked about where I really felt like he was addicted to blood. But this one just cranks it up a notch. And just like George Romero does all the time, he adds that social commentary in there. And it just makes it all the more relatable to the average audience. Romero also kind of subverts the vampire genre. There are a lot of things that make the vampire genre a little lame. One being that vampires have too many kryptonites. They can't look at crosses, sunlight kills them, garlic kills them, wolfsbane kills them. Uh, they have to sleep in a coffin at night with their own soil from their from where they were buried. Uh, there's too many rules after a while where you're just like, okay, I could fucking kick a vampire's ass. George Romero knows that pretty well and chooses to just fucking get rid of all of that stuff. There's a point in here where the cousin tries using garlic on Martin, and it just doesn't work. He's like, oh, you think that fucking movie shit works? And he starts eating the garlic, and it really works in here. I feel, I feel like it was a good idea to scrap all those uh, myths about the vampires. And while there is social commentary in this movie about drug addiction, it never feels forced. I wish every fucking movie maker would watch this movie. This is a movie where you take social commentary and you don't make it forced. This is social commentary on drug addiction post-Vietnam. Please, someone show it to the writers over at Marvel. Or please show it to whoever wrote the Don't Look Up movie, where they have Jonah Hill acting like Donald Trump. Just a little subtlety goes a long way, folks. This movie is Exhibit A. But yeah, it's not just the social commentary, intensity, great moments. George A. Romero is a master at editing, and this is one of his most solidly edited movies. That break-in scene, there's a scene where Martin breaks into a woman's house, and out of pure luck, or lack thereof, he enters the house and she's having an affair with a man. And all of a sudden, he has to try to take down two people. And it's this long, drawn-out sequence. There's a point where they try calling the cops, but Martin's on another telephone, and he's, like, hanging up constantly. Uh, they're chasing after one another. Martin makes an attempt to stab them with the syringe. No one passes out. It's really on the edge of your seat action. And it's not, like, crazy action. It's not like there's a fist fight that breaks out. But it's just like you're wondering what's going to happen next. And it's so drawn out. That scene was so perfectly paced. It's just a general emergency in Umber. Brand, I get called. Listen, is your car, okay. is your car here? Yeah. Look, call the hospital. Tell them what happened, right? Okay. Tell, tell them we're coming. We'll be there in five minutes. Okay, okay. What hospital? I don't, I don't know what hospital, though. It's quite... Uh, 
Mercy, is Mercy around here? Mercy, okay, okay, I don't know the number. All information, get the number, call them. Information, can you give me the number of Mercy Hospital, please? Thank you. <laughs> Shit, it's fucked up. Wait a minute. I gotta do it again. <laughs> I can't get through, I forgot the number. Wait, I'm... Louis, are you on the other phone? Louis! And then there's other moments that are paced perfectly as well. Guys, I really enjoyed this movie. If I had to give it one criticism, the ending is pretty abrupt, comes out of nowhere. Another interesting factoid about this movie, though, is that they recently found a reel that has some lost footage from the movie Martin. It's going on eBay for a lot of money. This is the kind of movie I think deserves a Criterion Blu-ray as well. It doesn't look too good now and it would really benefit from being remastered. Those are my thoughts on Martin. Great movie. Have you seen Martin? What's your favorite George A. Romero movie? I need to go blow my nose, folks. I'm sorry. Guys, take care and I'll see you tomorrow for more Garage Vampire-thon.